Sisawath Sirik Matak. In this Cambodian name, the surname is Sisawath. In accordance with Cambodian custom, this person should be referred to by the given name, Sirik Matak. Sisawath Sirik Matak, Khmer, January 22, 1914 to April 21, 1975, was a Cambodian. Titian and member of the Cambodian royal family, under the house of Sisawath. Sirik Matak was mainly notable for his involvement in Cambodian politics, particularly for his involvement in the 1970 change in power against his cousin, then Prince Noradam Sihanouk, and for his subsequent establishment, along with Lan Nau, of the Khmer Republic. Early Life Sirik Matak was born in Phnom Penh, and was a member of the Sisawath family, being the great-grandson of Sisawath of Cambodia by his grandfather Sisawath Esravang and his father Sisawath Rathari. He was recruited into the colonial civil service in 1930. Under the colonial French-imposed constitution, any member of the Noradam or Sisawath branches of the family could be selected as king, and Sirik Matak was therefore one of the possible contenders to the Cambodian throne. In 1941, after the death of King Sisawath Manavang, the French authorities selected Sirik Matak's cousin Noradam Sihanouk to be king, believing him to be relatively pliant. Sihanouk later accused Sirik Matak of harboring a deep resentment against him, stating that he hated me from childhood days because he thought his uncle, Prince Sisawath Monareth, should have been placed on the throne instead of myself. He even had a notion that he himself should have been chosen. Political Career after the Second World War, Sirik Matak became increasingly involved in Cambodian politics. As a part of the right-wing Khmer Renovation Party headed by Lan Nau, he took part in the National Assembly elections in 1947, though the party failed to win any seats. Sihanouk, then acting as Prime Minister, placed him in charge of defense in 1952, formally appointing him Minister of Defense in the interim government set up after independence in 1954. Sihanouk Sankam movement absorbed the Khmer Renovation Party prior to the Sankam victory in the 1955 elections. Despite the incorporation of much of the right-wing opposition into the Sankam, Sirik Matak remained an implacable opponent of Sihanouk, and especially of the latter's toleration of North Vietnamese activity within Cambodia's borders. Throughout the 1960s, Sihanouk attempted to minimize Sirik Matak's leverage on domestic politics by successively appointing him as Ambassador to China, 1962-1964, the Philippines, and Japan. Cambodian Coup of 1970 Further information, Cambodian Coup of 1970 Sirik Matak's power increased substantially after Lan Nau became Prime Minister in August 1969. After being appointed as Lan Nau's deputy, he proceeded to organize a series of economic denationalization and deregulation measures in opposition to Sihanouk's previous policy of state control of import and export, banking, and production of pharmaceuticals and alcohol. 5. Sirik Matak even visited Hanoi secretly to find out what could be done to remove Vietnamese troops from Cambodian soil. He was infuriated when he was shown documents signed by Sihanouk agreeing to the establishment of Vietnamese bases and the transport of Vietnamese supplies through Cambodian ports. March 12, 1970, while Sihanouk was on a trip abroad, Sirik Matak cancelled Sihanouk's trade agreements and Lan Nau demanded that all North Vietnamese and NLF troops leave Cambodia by dawn on March 15. The deadline passed without any response from the Vietnamese. On 18 March, Sirik Matak assisted Lan Nau in organizing a vote of the National Assembly to depose Sihanouk as head of state. The pretext was given by a series of anti-Vietnamese riots, likely encouraged by the Prime Minister and his deputy, in front of the North Vietnamese Embassy. The media subsequently suggested that Sirik Matak, who continued as Lan Nau's deputy in the new government, was the real organizational force behind the coup, it was claimed that in order to finally convince Lan Nau, Sirik Matak had played him a tape-recorded press conference from Paris, in which Sihanouk threatened to execute them both on his return to Phnom Penh. 
It was even reported that Sirik Matak compelled Lan Nal at gunpoint to commit to deposing Sihanouk. Sihanouk also assumed his cousin to be the main force behind the coup, claiming that Sirik Matak, backed by the CIA, and in contact with longtime Sihanouk opponent Sun Nak Tan, had already suggested the plan to Lan Nal as early as 1969. Sihanouk's suspicions seem to have rooted in fact, Pram Das, one of Lan Nal's ministers, later told the historian Ben Kiernan that in around March 1969 Sirik Matak had argued that Sihanouk should be assassinated, Lan Nal rejecting the plan as criminal insanity. Declaration of the Khmer Republic subsequent to the coup, Sirik Matak renounced his royal title, although he had initially planned in secret that his own son, or another member of the Sisawath family, possibly his son-in-law Prince Sisawath Doang Chibin, should take the throne. Khmer Republic The first year of the Republic, during which Lan Nal was often in poor health, Sirik Matak, as acting premier, retained the most prominent role in the government. It had an overtly military character, Sirik Matak usually appearing in his full uniform as a major general and carrying a swagger stick. Dot whereas Lan Nal was particularly popular amongst anti sihanouk students in Cambodian cities, Sirik Matak had the support of the westernized urban elite, rural Cambodians remained overwhelmingly pro sihanouk Sirik Matak also had relatively little personal support within the Cambodian political establishment, his power was gradually undermined by the Prime Minister's brother, Lan Nan, and he resigned in 1972 after the latter had organized a series of demonstrations against him. Despite pressure from the United States, who were strong supporters of Sirik Matak, Lan Nal kept him under effective house arrest, and he became an increasingly vocal critic of the Khmer Republic regime. April 1973 Lan Nal had been compelled to remove Lan Nan and suspended the National Assembly, appointing a high political council, composed of himself, Sirik Matak, Ching Hang and In Tam. Dot privately, however, Sirik Matak stated that under the circumstances it would be preferable to allow Sihanouk to return, due to his levels of popular support, stating, if the people wanted him, I would accept. On being informed of this, an enraged Sihanouk called Sirik Matak, one of the worst reactionaries and traitors of the history of Cambodia, we are going to hang him, quite simply hang him, hang him. The Fall of Phnom Penh, Edit Main Article, Fall of Phnom Penh Mayor Rouge communists initiated their dry season offensive to capture the beleaguered Cambodian capital on January 1, 1975. On April 1, 1975, President Lan Nal resigned and fled the country into exile in Hawaii, the Khmer Rouge had published a death list, with his name at the top, and their forces had now surrounded the capital. April 12, 1975, United States Ambassador to Cambodia John Gunther Dean offered high officials of the Khmer Republic political asylum in the United States, but Sirik Matak, Long Borat and Lan Nan, along with other members of Lan Nal's cabinet, declined, despite the names of Borat and Sirik Matak being published by the Khmer Rouge in a list of seven traitors marked for execution. Sirik Matak's written response to the ambassador stated, Dear Excellency and Friend, I thank you very sincerely for your letter and for your offer to transport me towards freedom. I cannot, alas, leave in such a cowardly fashion. As for you and in particular for your great country, I never believed for a moment that you would have this sentiment of abandoning a people which has chosen liberty. You have refused us your protection and we can do nothing about it. You leave us and it is my wish that you and your country will find happiness under the sky. Mark it well that, if I shall die here on the spot and in my country that I love, it is too bad because we are all born and must die one day. I have only committed the mistake of believing in you, the Americans. Please accept, Excellency, my dear friend, my faithful and friendly sentiments. Prince Sirik Matak The letter was reproduced and added to the book Autrefois, Maison Privy. Shortly after the surrender to the Khmer Rouge was announced, Sirik Matak sought refuge at the Hotel Le Penang, 
where the International Red Cross was attempting to create a safe zone. He was turned away once the Red Cross learned that his name was on the list of seven traitors. Outside the hotel, Sirik Matak talked to reporters and distributed copies of his letter to Ambassador Dean Francois Bizet reported that Sirik Matak sought political asylum at the French Embassy and that the Khmer Rouge threatened to come into the compound and remove certain individuals by force if they did not go voluntarily. Accompanied by the French Vice Consul Jean Dirac and journalist John Swain, Bizet took responsibility for informing Sirik Matak of the Khmer Rouge's demands, at which point he voluntarily surrendered and left on a Khmer Rouge jeep. With Mam Nai. Sirik Matak and the officials that remained along with him were likely executed by the Khmer Rouge on April 21, 1975. Exact details of his death are unclear, but Sihanouk received confirmation that Sirik Matak, along with Long Borat, had been summarily executed by firing squad at the Phnom Penh Circle Sportif on April 21. Other reports state he was beheaded. Henry Kissinger and others, however, note a report that Sirik Madak was shot in the stomach and left without medical aid to die over three days.